Pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. <laughs> nope. Copyright, copyright. We're down. We're out. We're gone. We're out. We're dead. Yep. We're done. Yep. We are here on a beautiful Tuesday. It's beautiful here. I don't know about there, but it is. Fucking spring has finally sprung a little late, but it's here finally. Yes. Yes. Here on a Thursday. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Things and events are happening around the world. <clears throat> um, and we don't care. No, uh, what I do care about is I'm going to try to do this a couple or at least twice tonight. So this weekend, uh, friend of the show, pure power wrestling cruiserweight champion and future world champion of the galaxy. Tim pops, Alex, he's <laughs> Dewey Robson. He will be defending his title against high class in Lathbridge rage in the cage Saturday, April 30th at the Fritz sick Fritz sick Memorial center. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent place for uh, a show. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Kyle Sebastian and uh, Sydney Steele in a cage for the Pure Power Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. So it should be entertaining. All the uh, advanced seating is sold. Not advanced, but the premium seats are sold. So uh, I got one of those. Me and uh a friend and his children will be going to watch Rage in the Cage. So it'll be great. If you happen to be in the Lethbridge area, please go support local wrestling. They'll also be in Natton on Friday. And money is going towards something in Natton. Uh, uh, and I'm trying to find it now. But I can't. It's not popping up right now. It's on right on their website. But either way, yeah, if you happen to be in Natton as well, there, there'll be an event in Natton. So, hey, I got to show you my shirt there. Reverend Ryan, check it out. I'm just going to move this and I'll fix it. Check it out. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty sick. I like it a lot. <sighs> God, it made himself. I did. And she did a great job, too. So, it's actually ended up being the, the woman that there's footies here in locally in Tabor. And this shirt. It's very nicely done. It's on a very nice shirt, very comfortable shirt, and it was twenty six dollars. So, yeah. Anyways, that's enough rambling. Let's move on. <laughs> Where do we want to start today? Hmm. Well, why don't we start with the first? Uh, this was on a poll, and um, no, it's not a wrestling match on a poll, but um. This was a poll on the Tabor Times, and it said, are you concerned about the monop monopolization of free speech? Now! Cool. How old is he now? 60-something? In the 60s. It's cool. funny. I've had a lot of people text me and, and tell me that he's going to be there, and I love everybody that's texted me and told me that, but hey, this is a secret. I only live two hours away from Brett. And he's always at things in Calgary. <laughs> so I love you all, but stop. Yeah, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so um I mean Alex talked about this off air. I'm not concerned about the monopolization of free speech. I'm concerned about who is the one to regulate speech. Now, now, now. <laughs> Before I start saying what I'm going to say, I think racist people are pieces of shit. 
uh, on all sides of like whoever hates anybody to hate anyone in this day and age is ridiculous. Well, Absolutely. we might have an argument about okay. that, but go ahead. Punch Nazis, punch Nazis. You know what I'm saying? But to, to hate somebody because of their skin color or, yeah. or even if they don't believe in what you believe is ridiculous. Yeah. Hate them for the content of their character, not the color yes. of their skin. Yes. So if you want to say you hate a white supremacist, like I'm about to, I hate white supremacists. I think it's ridiculous. I think I think it's absolutely ass this ridiculous. But for people to say, well, that is hate speech. And I agree, it is hate speech. But there's always the other side. And no matter what, whether you think their message is wrong or not, they think your message is wrong. So, so why aren't they allowed to say, well, your message is wrong? Where's the line? And someone will say, well, well, they're they're saying they're spreading hate speech. Well, I just did that by saying I hated white supremacists. Technically, that it, te- on, technically that is hate speech. I said I hated some a group of people. Mm-hmm. So that's the problem: is who's the one that is allowed to dictate and and say what is hate speech? That's what what I'm worried about is when they start doing this. Where's the line? Where do you stop? Yeah. And with regards to what the Tabor Times is saying, the the monopolization, that word should not be difficult to say, but for whatever reason it is, because my mouth moves faster than my brain sometimes. So what happens when you get old. Monopolization by private companies, social media, versus by the government. There's a big difference between the two. When you sign up for, let's say, Twitter, because Elon Musk and Twitter have been trending on Twitter for the past few days, uh, (laughs) there's a big difference when the Canadian government says, okay, hate speech is illegal versus signing up to Twitter and clicking yes, I agree on either an end user license agreement or the terms of service or the user agreement to not say certain things and abide by that particular company's rules, regulations, and policies. Big difference. Yeah. We've had this. We, I know know we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Like you're agreeing. This is a platform. Um, like Twitter isn't a, a right to privilege i guess i guess that's why how you can say it right it's not a right you don't have the right to have priv- twitter you don't have the right to have facebook or instagram right yeah it's a privilege you yeah. sign it you use your your internet connection you create an account you agree to their terms and then there you go you can use it as long as you're following their rules sounds pretty simple exactly yes. As exactly as Ryan said, privately owned entities have their own rules and abilities. Exactly. Yes. And just like anywhere, anywhere does. Every any any company does. Yeah, and and I think I said this last week with regards to freedom in and of itself. Um, the kind of freedom that some people are talking about lost and trying to fight back for, you don't have it in any country in the world, all the freedom to do whatever I want, that doesn't exist in any country in the world. Every country has rules and laws and regulations and policies that you have to follow, including here in Canada. I mean, Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Mm -hmm. have a look at it once in a while. Yep. You can't just go out and kill people. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. Well, you can't do whatever you want. You have to define this I can do whatever I want. Define that. Yeah. I mean, and let's, let's call this, here. Here's the best example. A guy tried to do what he wanted. That guy's name is Jeffrey Epstein. He did. Didn't yeah. that probably why he got that out of it? Because he probably thought he was unfucking touchable. Yeah. And then he hung himself. He sure did. <laughs> Camera's crooked. Bugger me. There. That's better. Okay. I think it is anyway. <laughs> but yeah, like, 
there's no like anyone like that's just it, but always like oh, my freedoms i fucking i'm well, i was free to do whatever i wanted and i'll say it here right here right fucking now uh they're talking about covid numbers have kind of been talked about again mm-hmm. i'm completely anti shut like closing down i i'm completely against it against it but i'm all for wearing a mask yeah, they want me to wear them. If if I if me wearing a mask is going to ensure that nothing closes down again, I'm in. Yeah, if it stops the spread or at least slows the spread, why not? I had the sniffles last week. I wore the mask. I I didn't touch my face. I stayed away from people. I kept my hands clean. I'm fine. Um, but in the coming weeks, we'll see if anyone who is around me is still fine. And mm-hmm. I haven't gotten tested, so I have no idea. Speaking of which, Heather, she wasn't feeling great last week. I hope she is uh, now. I hope she's doing okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Uh dryer just buzzed. My wife decided to wash the to wash the, the curtains and then she forgot to turn the washer on. <laughs> so now she's trying to get them to the dry. Oh. Yeah, so see that's the thing with Jeffrey Epstein is that he had so much money, he I think with his ego, he developed this idea that he could skirt laws because of the American mentality towards huge gobs of money and people who had it. I think that is a big problem with um, professional wrestlers or professional wrestlers, job professional athletes in general. <laughs> like you see a lot of young men who like, you know, the Raiders had their problems there with a few other players and these kids just, they, they went from nothing to having, and then I can't say nothing. A lot of people, <clears throat> you know, I'm sure. And I, I don't have, my son did not make a college team or nothing, but these kids, once they hit the college level, I'm sure are being taken care of ish. You know, do they come from hard times? Your fucking rights. A lot of them did, hmm. but they come basically from nothing. And all of a sudden they're like multi-millionaires, right? And they probably do. Like they've been told their whole lives, you're fucking great. You're awesome. You know, like you're the man, cool guy. See you at the beach. And now they have a lot of money and they really think, oh, I made it. So yeah, you, like I think that's a problem with actors and anyone. Yeah, anyone with a lot of money, they think they're untouchable. Especially if that person gets that money when they're young. It has a huge impression uh-huh. on them. Yeah. Well, and then you uh, you see we see lots of things about how like well and well I'll, here's a good segue now like to Johnny Depp like his weird behaviors and shit. And mm-hmm. I, I I don't know if we did if we talked about this last week, but when did the first Nightmare on Elm Street come out? Eighty four. There, it's my boy. Um, so he has been basically a millionaire since mid eighties. Uh, well, he's had a forty year career, right? So I mean, he he. Maybe not a multi-millionaire, really, till Pirates. I mean, he had some good movies, but he was at least in the millions. Had to have been. Probably by the mid-90s, maybe towards the late 90s, his name was getting pretty up there. So perhaps by then, yeah. Um, It had to be at least after 21 Jump Street. Hey, what? Okay. Um, Well, I just, I want to look at IMDb, because I'm kind of, because, okay, okay, here's here's one. Uh, Steven Tyler. Like when yeah. he was when he was on um, Howard Stern a few years ago, he's fucking weird as fuck. This guy's been a billionaire, and not and I'm not even gonna do the drug thing. He's been a, a millionaire for fucking thirty years. <laughs> for like, think about it. Like you're that rich, you're like, well, what am I gonna do today? I I don't have to worry about money. Money, um. You know what? What I need maybe to find some eccentric shit to do, right? Because I've done everything I could do. I got, I've done everything that I wanted to do when I first got my money, and now I'm at the point. It's like I got to figure out some new shit. Yeah. Right. So I. This is why those guys get eccentric and weird is because they've done all the normal shit. Right. I think that's. I think that's a good look at it. It's one way to look at. It. Yeah. There have been movies that have been released in the past ten years about rich people who do. Uh, crazy weird things because they're bored you know like kidnap people and lock them in a house and then hunt them down stuff like that yeah that's weird yeah it is weird but it's it points to rich people who are bored that that's the basic plot line you're right though you are very very right yep yep rich people who are bored yep yeah yeah they 
So that points a bit to the mentality of, or maybe it's the psychology of the busy mind in this day and age, like people who are trying to stay above board, especially in this day and age with a job or two jobs or three part-time jobs, side hustle, side gigs, what have you, and mm -hmm. not having the time to be on Twitter 10 or 12 hours a day yeah. versus people who have all the money who can do pretty much whatever they want when they want. They can be up till three or four in the morning watching movies. Not me because I go to bed by midnight, but I, I do watch movies. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, it points to a restless mind if you've got too much free time. And I think about a guy like Elon Musk who has Tesla and SpaceX, two giant companies, either one of which could take up the rest of his life, but he's got how many side projects going on as well. Not only that, but taking over Twitter. And that's a huge job in and of itself. I mean, yeah. Elon Musk to me is an example of a guy who has a restless mind, who's constantly thinking and who can't get mental satisfaction from just having one job. Maybe he's just that smart that he can figure stuff out like that. And then he needs something to keep him going Yeah, or yeah. what? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. So back to Johnny Depp. And I, this isn't one of those, I told you, blah, blah, blah. But so John, 21 Jump Street ended in 1990 for him. Mm. And so this is why I think, yeah, I want to say early 90s, he's been like loaded because he went from, okay, so there was uh, 21 or the Nightmare on Elm Street, right, of course. And then I've never seen the alternate ending, scary ending. What the fuck is that? Of the first just, Nightmare? Neither of yeah. I. Okay, because I'm just reading on IMDb. It says, so Nightmare on Elm Street, he was Glenn Lance, 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 of course. But it says, and right on, on top of that, it says, <clears throat> Nightmare on Elm Street, alternate ending, scary ending. Interesting. Interesting. But, so, I agree. So, I would, I'm going to go back to the early 90s, like I said, because he did Edward Scissorhands in 1990, and then Betty in June in 93. And that was great. Gilbert Grape. 90 which is yeah. awesome in 93 yeah. and then ed wood in 94 yes so yeah dude i think yeah he was established yeah. because then like he had a couple like lower movies and then he comes up with donnie brasco and then yeah fear which and was loathing. 97 yeah when then fear and loathing 90 yeah 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 and then the ninth gate i like the ninth gate i really enjoyed it yeah that and from hell i saw around the same time those I are didn't mind from hell either yeah uh, i loved his uh uh sleepy hollow Yes. I loved it. I I love everything about that movie. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you did, then there's, yeah, From Hell, and then there's Blow. Yeah. So, uh, Chocolat. And then I saw that. It was all right. And then, and then the Pirates start. <laughs> yeah. In 2003. Yeah. Yeah. Or 2001. 2003. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I think I was, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm right. That I, well, and that's not a, I'm right. But yeah, 19. So he's been a millionaire since the early 90s. Yeah. So of course he's fucking eccentric. Of course he's weird. Like dur. Yeah, and he's done quite a bit of drugs over the years, allegedly, and he's probably got. Oh, he's yes admitted men. it. Yeah. And that and that was like very s s nice watching. Is that how he's like? No, no, I'll never do it again. And of course he's saying that, but he's saying I'm sober. I, you know, I, I I'm not going to jeopardize. He said this during the trial. Like I'm not going to jeopardize it, mm. which is awesome to see. And I, you know, a lot of us probably would be do some stupid shit with all that money like without a doubt yeah um look at people's answers if you ask them two questions number one what would you do if you had millions of dollars uh, or if you didn't have to work again you could alternate with that but number two if you only had one day to live what would you do it's that that you only live once that yolo kind of mentality and yeah. the stupid shit that people would do in either of those scenarios would probably not boggle your mind if you've kept your eye open with how people's behaviors have just gotten, in my mind, progressively worse over the past five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And God, now you got me thinking, what the fuck would I do? <laughs> Honestly, if I had one day, I would drive home as fast as I could. Yeah, because if 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 you're telling me that at midnight 
like if someone said to me, so if I found out today, like say, or if I found out tomorrow morning that when I woke up and then I, something said, Hey, you're done at midnight tonight. It's over. I would be in my vehicle flying back to McKenzie. And I'd be bringing Colin and Kim with me and mm-hmm. I'd be on top of Murphy mountain when it ended. That's where I'd want to be. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's where I'd want to be when I went. I want to be home. Or sitting, I don't, or, the, or right now, because the dock might be out, I'd be this, or on the dock on Morphe Lake. Hmm. Yeah. So. Of course, men can be the victims of domestic abuse. We've known about this for years prior to this, but <laughs> it was stigmatized in such a way as to attack that man's manhood and say, oh, he's a pussy if he lets a woman bait him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Oh, now I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So. So, yeah. Uh, what else got going on? Uh, we had a pretty good gig on Friday night. Right on. Uh, just a local uh, party. But it was a lot of fun. We filled the place up. Did a killer job. It was it was funny because we we finished. I thought we were done, and they're like one more song. So we played our last song. We played was "Feeling This" by Blink One Eighty Two. Oh yeah, I can't believe how nuts everybody went. Like people were jumping up and down and singing, and yeah, it was great. Um, so the I'm not going to say well the the audience must have been just as old as you. I imagine it's a good mix of people in terms of age. No. These people were because Cole and Jared are only 24. Hmm. I'm 42, and Jared's dad is like 50 something. And it was awesome because we did Seven Nation Army. Yeah. And it went, went like the, I had everybody clapping, the whole bar was clapping. Right. And then, uh, spoiler alert, but we do, we, we've started, we do Shine by Collective Soul now. Hmm. And then, like, the breakdown where it's like, yeah. I had everybody in the bar was doing it. I was like, come on! And everyone, like, everybody in the bar is like, yeah! So it was fucking awesome. <laughs> so now I'm excited to get out in front of a bunch of people. So we play again on the 14th of May at the Cornfest stage. We're playing as part of the barbecue. They have a barbecue competition, so we are the second band. So I'm excited for that. When you're up on the stage, do you ever get the jitters with regards to not being nervous on stage? But um, if you're getting the vibe of the crowd and does it ever come into the back of your mind, this guy wants to jump up on stage or I might get a bottle thrown at me or someone wants to fight me, anything like that? No. Right on. Has anyone ever heckled you or the band? Nope. Lucky. Lucky. So... But I would also be the first person if they did. I'd be like, "You want to come up here and do this?" I, I would. I would stop everybody and be like, "Come on, you do it." No, you're going to eat your words if it turns into the um, the Mark Wahlberg rock star thing. Oh, for sure, and, and yeah. it probably won't though. But um, yeah. you know. So, speaking of that, not at all. How many days left on your Facebook live stream ban? Ooh, let me see. Oh, let me see. Uh, Where do I got to go? Oh, okay. This might be easier here on my phone. I ignored your comment, Ryan. Yes, um, domestic abuse on men is now mainstream. Yes, and it is a bit more socially acceptable now with skepticism, of course, but it's it's starting to get up there, which is great. I don't know. It's not showing me. Mental health and all that. Uh, wait, when if I go right to my account? It's censoring you. Uh, usually it says right in the thing why you're like restricted. And it does not say that right now. But I know I still am because I just tried to go uh, live and I couldn't. Okay. So I don't know. How much longer I have. (laughs) So before you reach zero days, and I've said this before, but I'm going to suggest it to you again. Would you like to go through 
your Facebook posts and take down anything that might be flagged next. That's just it. I can't go back that far. <laughs> <laughs> like I got dinged for like a couple from like 2015. Like, are you fucking kidding me? You can go back five years if you, if you go with either timeline photo. I got that photo. time. Oh come on. Okay, I just don't want to. <laughs> Is that better? Fick. Just don't want to stop pressuring me. Okay, well at least you're admitting that you don't want to. That's that's a lot better than I don't have the time. Yes, you do. I just don't want to. <laughs> I'm seeing like fuck. Where, why the hell can I see that? What the hell did I click before to make it different? Oh my god. <laughs> Tech support for Nick. Tech support for Nick. Help. Yeah, it's like when I went, was trying to go live, it would say like, "Well, you can't go live because." Yeah. Hmm. Everyone who's friends with Nick on Facebook, go through all his old posts and tag the ones you think should be taken down because they might get him in trouble next. Yeah, no shit, right? So we can have one or two more live viewers possibly, Fuck. and then we can feel better about ourselves when we go live. Yeah, start sharing okay. shit. Okay. Sure. So here, there's a discussion I'll bring up. So, so people, it's it's a mixed thing now on on um, this website I'm on or a page I'm on called Cover Band Central. So, it says that people shouldn't have, um, <laughs> pe people should not have iPads on stage or music stands like the lyrics on stage. And what bugs me, hold on, I have an iPad. Now, here's my thing about it. Here's my feeling on it. You think for one second all those fancy things in front of these guys are fucking monitors anymore? They're not. If you really watch the front of the stage when they pan around at a concert, they have the lyrics scrolling down below their fucking feet. Hmm. They have teleprompters. So as far as I'm concerned, if like... Guys who wrote the songs can't fucking remember them and need help with lyrics. Why can't a guy who's had fucking probably 12 concussions have something over there to help him fucking remember lyrics? <laughs> in before a guy like Brody comes in and says, only someone like Gore Downey, who, who had half his brain removed, is allowed to have something to help him remember the lyrics on stage. Not true. Not they true. all do it. All of them do it. They all do. And I'd expect them to. You're not going to remember all that shit. Well, it depends on how often you show up for band practice. Dude, I listen to these. Dude, I've been listening to some of these songs since the 90s, and I still can't remember them all properly. <laughs> you need more fish oil, boy. I don't know what the fuck I need sometimes. Good Lord. <laughs> Good fucking Lord. I should not be young. Fuck me. You're old. Ugh. I am old. Like we don't, we so. We <laughs> this is a great question. This this here is amazing, and I feel like this is like the necktie question on um on like a giraffe. Okay, like where would a giraffe wear its necktie? Okay, especially like high or low. This is a great. This is a great fucking question. All okay. right, I. I I just got to get a kick out of this. Just pop me. Fuck. <laughs> That's awesome, right? It makes you think, oh, hmm. Where would a shark play a harmonica? I think that's yes. a very good question. I think it is anyways. Because <laughs> it's awesome. Why it's asking me stupid questions right now. Jesus, that brings up the do dogs wear pants like this or this infographic that was going around. So either on the four legs or just the two. Yeah. I'd say this two on the rear end because it covers up the cock and balls and the butthole. That's what I'd say. That's a pretty good uh, assessment, right? Yeah. But you got to cut a hole in the back of those little pants for the tail to stick through. Well, if they duh. have it. Yeah. Duh, because they need to be cute. <laughs> 
Hello? McFly? Hey, McFly. Good Lord, I hope they don't remake that stuff. Oh, dude, they shouldn't be making it. Like, I thank God it hasn't happened yet. Thank God. If I remember correctly, and you know I don't because I'm not going to cite any sources, Robert Zemeckis, the director, he's holding on to... Uh, those rights as long as he can and he's got to be in his 70s or his 80s now and i imagine there's probably going to be a clause somewhere that when he dies he takes those rights with him so that no one else can can remake that shit because there's there's been a few good remakes over the years a few a lot not really um but Back to the Future is something that should not be remade because I don't know what else in this day and age we could say about that story that would be new, fresh, and relevant. I think it's it's all been said at that point. So leave it and move on. Hello. There you are. How you doing? You okay? You out of the hospital? I hope you're feeling right? better there, Big Red. Yeah. Well, crazy. They're shutting down the co-op in McKenzie. Shutting it down permanently. The, the, sorry, the 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 pharmacy, the pharmacy, they bought Pharmasave out a few years or three years ago. Now they're closing it down. The Pharmasave was across from where the movie gallery was, right? No, that's People's. Okay. Pharmasave well, was in the mall. Yeah. In the corner across from Northern, where the North Sands is now. Or oh Walmart. yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought my first protein powder from Pharmasave back in the nineties. I'm actually using that's my breakfast is a protein shake, but a protein with a banana and a scoop of peanut butter. It's pretty fucking all right. I tried that a few times. It was okay. Pretty tasty. And do you want to what, dude? Like then, yeah, we talked about in, I think it was, we talked about last week was intermittent fasting, right? Yeah. Cause yeah, basically I'm not eating from like dinner. Like I, I ate tonight at five 30. I won't eat like fuck solid food again tomorrow till noon. Solid food, but you said in the morning protein I shake. Have that that shake yeah. Nutrients, yeah. So that counts. We'll eat my dick. I mean, I'm taking it still because I'm diabetic. I have to. Yeah. Well, if it's 5 30 p.m. until at least 6 or 7 a.m., that's a good 12, 13 hours. So that it's, is almost it's, intermittent. It's 6 8. It's 6 a.m. because that's when I get up at 6. Okay. Well, that's cool. So I think it's, you know, and I actually had someone pay a compliment to me the other day. Like, have you been losing weight? Like, <coughs> yes, I have been. Nice. So, yeah. Whew, they bought us pizza today, and uh, I haven't had pizza in a while. Of course, carbs, my yeah. sugar jumped almost to 18. Ooh. But I mean, it dropped right back down to fucking six within three hours. So that's all right. That's okay. Now, that, is that because you had the pizza by itself, like nothing with it? Nothing. It was just pizza. That's all I had. There I'm you bad. go. So I'm a bad Nick. I'm willing to bet if you in the future had that pizza with, say, some eggs, you know, some I pro- say sauerkraut, I was going to punch you <laughs> and sauerkraut. Yeah. You have your probiotics. Yeah, I, sh- I should have eaten my peppers. Yes, it would have helped. I should have eaten. But you want to dude, I've been doing really good. And my because I usually stick to like a garlic sausage, a pepperoni and just cheese. That's my lunch with peppers. That's my lunch every day. And I, I love it. I like it. My sugar doesn't spike. It goes good. And I was like, I, yeah, I, the pizza was there. I can't say no to pizza. I can't. I'd be skinnier, but pizza, fuck. I haven't <laughs> like, had pizza in two years, I think. Oh, but, and I don't care what anybody says. And maybe there are people that will say this. And whoever says this, don't be friends with them anymore. You don't need this negativity in your life. Pizza is not pizza. Like people, oh, well, even bad pizza is good. No, it's not. It's it's not <laughs> a bad pizza is fucking bad. Heather, tell us what's in a Scottish breakfast. I think you did before, but fill us in again. The pizza there is disgusting. Hmm. Yeah, I know it's in a Scottish breakfast. All right. <laughs> it made no sense. I know it didn't. <laughs> I know where she's getting her protein from. No. Oh. Ow! Uh, yeah, I'm curious. Well, I guess I could Google it by the time she drunkenly types it out. (laughs) Oh, it's breakfast. 
Uh, oh, wow, that's pretty big. It looks good. Holy fucking shit. Eggs, bangers. Yeah, I got a banger for you. Um, <laughs> Baked beans, taters, blood yeah, sauce. It's big, yeah. That's a lot of protein and fat. And yep. well, the baked beans gives you complex carbs, which is great. Good Lord, I bet you eat that and nothing else that day. Lauren's sausage looks good. I'm just looking at it's looking at uh, white pudding is a mealy pudding, you know. <laughs> just I don't know why this just popped me. But I'm reading this thing and it's like vegetarian Scottish breakfast. And all I hear is Graham keep willing. Vegetarian! You cheese eating tender monkey! Because <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I can't see a Scottishman eating. And I know they do. But I may, maybe I'm a racist asshole because my other thing was Willie going, da! You don't need a vegetarian. No, that was Arnold. Ar Arnold Scottish. <laughs> Arnold the Scott. <laughs> yeah. A light tea mid afternoon. Yeah, along with a stomach pump. Yeah, I, I'm curious what their meat pies are like. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking like our shitty Swanson pies, which I have to admit I do enjoy, but every once in a while, but they are shitty. Like, I wonder what like their meat pies are like. And I'm not even being sexual this time. Like, I'm I'm curious like what, like, what a Scottish pie. <sighs> Trying to be mature would entail. <laughs> You fail. <laughs> that was hard. Hey, I did it. Shut <laughs> up. I did it. Ish. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> God, God, stop fucking yawning. I'm so sorry, guys. Like, it's only an hour difference. Our day shift, like, our shift during the summer moves to 7 a.m. During okay. the winter, we're at 8 a.m. And yeah. I'm not like this at 8 a.m. when we do the 8 a.m. And I, we're still in bed by, like, you know. Oh, see, that'd be good. Nothing compares to them. No. Nothing compares <laughs> to them. Hmm, sounds delicious. Because I, I'm a steak guy. I love steak. Oh, fuck. Steak. Yep, steak when it's done right is great. I don't have it very often, and I probably should have it more often. What do you enjoy, and like, how do you enjoy your steak done? Oof. not bloody, but there's um, there's a point where it's cooked so that when you're chewing it, you're chewing it minimum eighty times. That's too much. Yeah. What is it? Medium medium rare is too much, right? Something like that. No, medium rare is perfect. That's what I like. Okay. Like rare is, yeah, like. Ooh, pickled onions. Nice. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I see like my dad, I hate, oh God, my dad. He, when, when they make his, that's my girl. Yeah, pink in the middle. My dad also, when he tells, when he gets a steak made, when we used to go out for dinner, he, he'd be like, Okay, you know how it's well done? And the lady, okay, well done. He's like, no, no, no. Leave it on for an extra 30 seconds, then it's done. It's like, Ugh, Jesus. Hmm. How's your piece of fucking leather? <laughs> you know, like, good Lord. That's disgusting. What is that? Are you looking at more Scottish food? No, no, it is somebody stealing something in Tabor. <laughs> is that a live cam you're looking at? <laughs> no, no, it just. No, just, yeah, somebody stole something in Tabor, but they caught him. So, but what are you going to do, right? It happens. Yeah, when people get poor, they get desperate. Yep. Shit happens. Yeah, for sure. That going back to that poll about free speech uh -huh. um, that was happening in Tabor, is that something that you can vote on online and see the results? Yeah, it's just the town of Tabor page. That's all. Okay. And only like nineteen people have have voted on it, right? So, and the and that's the thing we really, we've discussed long before, and we did pull this. Get ready to take a shot off Rogan. You can't listen to these fucking 
polls because like how many people are they actually fucking polling right what india yeah that doesn't really mix oh well. yeah no no yeah no no the best pizza that i found and i think this was flying wedge pizza that's a chain here in vancouver it's got a a thin crust and thick toppings like really thick that's what i like in a pizza the the crust i'm not crazy about i'm not one of those people who's gonna discard the crust or tear it off and throw it away but i i don't like a huge crust on the pizza i enjoy a nice thin like crust but crispy mm. it's gotta be crispy i like a crispy i hate it if it's too doughy i like a good crunchy yeah Crunchy like garlic bread? Mm, no, not that crunchy. All right. Yeah. Because I haven't you know, had garlic bread in years either. You were saying the only... The tits was Max's garlic fingers. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> they want garlic fingers now. <laughs> yeah, do you want... Do you want some garlic fingers too? Okay. Go tell mom. Ooh. Now the wood fire oven, you got me there, but gourmet, yeah. We I went to a place in Lethbridge called Tops Pizza. And I mean it wasn't a huge pizza, but oh my god, it was fucking fabulous. It was amazingly good. And it was one of a little mom and pop place. That's I think that's where you probably find the best pizza would be is a mom and pop place. Uh, most likely, yes. Yeah, local stuff, stuff that's not chain, for the most part, yes. I had Domino's. Ugh. Was it Domino? Yeah, I think I had Domino's a time or two. It wasn't bad, but smaller places like restaurants that do pizza much better. I found. Mm. You know what? I think I think Sarah's actually told me about. Uh, T tabber tabber that ski hole's not open anymore right ryan it looks pretty fucking like it's gone it looks pretty grown in when we drive in from uh from uh you know over here in alberta hmm. yeah so uh so my friends went and saw uh zz top last night oh yeah Yep. Uh, they said ZZ Top's pretty good. I've heard different stories that Cheap Trick sucked. It Oh, it burnt down. Okay, I get it. Oh, I get it. Let's see what Cole said about Cheap Trick. What was their big hit? Cheap Trick? Yeah. I want you to want me. Ugh. And then there was Surrender, surrender. Daddy doesn't know. I'm not a big cheap. Well, my favorite song by them is called The Flame. Okay. That's a good tune. No. Yeah, not a big fan of Cheap Trick. <laughs> I want Johnny Jepp to win this trial. Look directly at Amber and say, you'll always remember this as the day that you almost caught Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> 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 now if i remember this trial that's going on it's about uh johnny and his team trying to prove defamation uh, against sure. him yeah. yeah yeah sure who fucking knows who know they're just yeah just being dumb basically <laughs> just being dumb yeah and i love these people who say the trial is going on to distract us from what's really going on. Wrong. You can take 10 minutes to <laughs> look at the highlights of the trial, and then you can go back to the war in Ukraine, and then you can look at financial stuff that's happening here in North America. There is no 24-hour distraction going on. It's all what you choose to focus your time on. The Way by Fastball. Yeah, that, um, that music video, that's great. Yeah, the backstory is the interesting part. What is the backstory? If you can just tell me off the top of your head. Old couple goes out for a drive, doesn't come back. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, fair enough. 
And I don't know if they found the the bodies or they just disappeared. I'd like to think they found the old couple because they had gotten out of the car at one point and then wandered off probably. You know how old people are. They just, they're like kids who can't move well. Yeah, I know. I've had to call Chadney in a few times. (laughs) And he's probably not here right now because he's fallen asleep in his wheelchair with pudding dripping off his chin. Yeah. Yeah. Had fucking... Like a pudding fall on him. He's like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh. It's too heavy. I can't get it off me. They found Ew. the corpse a few hundred miles away. Well, then that might indicate foul play. But then again, maybe they just wandered off. I remember seeing it, the music video on MTV back when that album came out. What, 99, 2000, something like that? Yep. Yeah. Interesting music video. I do remember that. They drank up the wine and they got to talking. Oh, I'm going to clip that. Going without even knowing the way. I'm going to clip that so hard, bro. <laughs> so, you like stuff? Stuff's all right. I don't know Karen yet. Did you have another video you said? I had one more, yeah. Okay. Do you want to watch that now? We don't have to do Karen right now. Might as well. Okay. This one's probably in the minute range. No, this is even shorter. Um, And I had to pull the audio from this because it's copyrighted, obviously. But it's i think it's from tiktok and the words on the screen tell exactly everything you need to know okay gotta go to bigger size wow wow yeah, like that's that's just irresponsible and reckless, and probably charges should be brought up on that bitch. You think? Yes, I do think. Oh, I, I completely, I full wholeheartedly agree with you. Then again, wow. um, we don't know the whole context. However, is context needed? This is the great debate about this clip. Is context needed at this point for this? Not clip? at all. Okay. Uh, um, no. Uh, well, okay. Uh, the only context I could see that is needed there is what time of day was it? Now, albeit, like here, like actually Kim pointed it out this morning, like, look, it was the, we, like light out at 530 this morning. Like I kind of mm-hmm. rolled over, looked at the times, like, hey, I got a half an hour still. And it was like, it's fucking light out already. Like, holy shit. So it could be super early. I doubted it. I'm just this. That's what I just want to know what time it is. I, you, during the week, people can't bitch. Even the weekends now, you can't really bitch when people do work. Um, I, there, I had a person one time who was uh, bitching about guys working while she was trying to sleep on graveyards. And it's like, whoa, the world doesn't stop because you work night shift. Exactly. Like, that's not the way it, it works. So, Yes, um, especially with all the construction sites I've seen around here, uh, permitted hours of construction, and they post this on the gate at the site between 7 a.m. and I think it's 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. on Saturday and then not on Sunday, so you Mm -hmm. can't really complain. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm glad to hear you're happier, Big Red. Now, we're not saying, well... We are kind of the cause of all of that. So you're welcome. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, I'm I'm sorry it happened. But then again, maybe it was for the better. It's one of those things where it happened and it was terrible at first. But in hindsight, it was a blessing. You know, perhaps. Yes, Ryan, that could be construed as attempted murder because she was trying to cut a specific hydraulic cable, I think. So if she knew what she was doing and she wasn't just willy-nilly cutting anything, then there may be a case for that. Yes. Yeah, because you she did, yeah, and I mean it, it's not her thing to be um cutting, of course, but yeah, like how does she know for sure what that even does? 
Yeah, she could have gotten electrocuted with what she cut yeah. as well. And, and uh, albeit, I know it was always a uh, it was a dramatization, of course. But do you remember uh, a thousand ways to die? Did you ever see that show? It was on Spike for a, a few years, uh, quite a few years. Anyways, Heard about one it. of the ones was like this guy <clears throat> owed the mob money. And of course, you always make the person sound like who died was a complete piece of shit, right? Yeah. And the person reaches in, right? And the Bob guy, because the guy on the top of the, the boom owes the money. And it's a scissor lift. And he reaches in and he cuts the hydraulic. And as soon as he cuts it, the scissor lift goes and fucking cuts him in half. Yeah. Right. Now, again, dramatization. I don't know how fast it would drop. I bet you it would drop fast. If you cut the completely cut the hose, it would drop. Like instant. Like, I don't know even if it I'd like to know if it even dropped that fast. But. So you know, Darwin Award stuff, hey? Yeah. And, oh, dude, it is. But uh, but you you will always notice the guy who uh, does that is a is a like a piece of shit. The guy mm. who person who dies or the people who die are doing uh, heinous shit. So mm. yeah. Now speaking of heinous shit, and I'm sure a couple people are gonna be like, eh, "You just figured this out?" Because I knew she was a piece of shit. But I started listening to a podcast called True Co- Crime Cast. And I'm kind of just bouncing around to all the ones I, I want to hear about, right? They're already about 45 minutes long. And they this one was a two-parter on the Casey, Casey Anthony case. Ooh. Now, I knew this woman was a piece of shit. I have no idea how this woman got off with, the, with murder, like of not being charged with the murder of her daughter. It's the American healthcare system or part of healthcare legal system. It is. I, I recommend because I never did. I knew that I, I mean, I remember because I was stateside at the time. There are a lot like I remember Bubba the Love Sponge was making like parody songs about her and shit yeah. like that because everyone knew like, I'm sorry. And I, I mean, I'll say it. She fucking killed her child. There's no doubt in my fucking mind. But you need to go listen to this because I didn't realize how much of a piece of a shit piece of shit this girl really was in her whole life. Like everything she did hmm. was just a lying piece of shit. It's unfucking real. So, yeah. Yeah, that's one American crime case that I never bothered to take the time to get into is Casey Anthony. I would like you to because I'm a I'm a I'm a major hillbilly okay <laughs> so i would like you to to yeah i don't i don't care if you want to watch, listen to that true crime cast yeah. podcast or do some some research on it and it's tell me what you think yeah if you send me the links to those two i'll definitely listen i'm caught up on all my shows well there it's on my apple podcast so i don't know if i can send it to you oh uh, let me go to let me see i'll see if they're on youtube here but yeah, it was it just man. Was there, was there any inch of reasonable that? Yep, that's all they need. I watched a movie today from 1979. It's about a, a true crime case in the United States. The name of the movie, and I watched it three hours ago, so I should know. But for whatever reason, it's escaping me. At James Woods and John Savage, 1979. The Onion Field is what it's called. And it shows kind of what a joke the American legal system was then and definitely hasn't gotten any better in the years to come. Jody Arias. It sounds familiar. What Wasn't did she that do? girl who I can't remember? Yeah, sorry, dude. They don't have anything on True Crime Cast podcast. It's not on YouTube, but yeah, it's it's unreal, dude. It's 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 it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. American Crime Cast. Uh true true crime cast. True crime cast. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up for sure here, right? This. But yeah, even like the what they how they break it down, and it's like I I don't understand how I I just I I ooh, see I'm just flabbergasted. It's called True Crime Cast. Crime Cast is one word. Gotcha. I'll find it. 
I'll do some sleuthing. Yeah, it was yeah. Um yeah, they they like talked about job like like listen to the Ed Gein one because of course that was the inspiration for Bob, the Buffalo Bill and uh um Leatherface. So of course I'm like, ooh, I'm in there. Um and Ted Bundy. I mean, I've seen lots read lots on Bundy. I wonder what it is about the human psyche where we get into the like killers like that. Like what is it because it's shit that we will hopefully never do? <laughs> um and it's just like wondering how people could be so evil i wonder what the the draw is that's one part of it i think it's a morbid fascination with people who go that far off the deep end and Mm -hmm. number two i think it's a kind of self-preservation measure where if you can study a person like that then maybe you can see them coming away a mile on the down the road or something and avoid them and save your own life Mm -hmm. i don't know Speaking of people going missing, there's a great foreign movie from, Jesus, I want to say 87 or 89. I think it's a German film called The Vanishing. And it was remade in here in, in North America in 93 with Kiefer Sutherland. It's about a guy whose girlfriend suddenly goes missing one day and he spends years searching for her. And then he somehow finds the people who were responsible and I'm not going to spoil the ending. I'm simply going to leave it at that. I recommend the original foreign version. It's really good. Madison Scott. She ended up in McKenzie. Well, she, she disappeared from Vanderhoof. Hmm. So. Yeah, I don't know. I thought they were kind of, I, I heard this story. I think I heard it on True Canadian Crime Cast. Hmm. Yeah. So I yeah I I don't remember. I think I might have heard it because I, I just I just googled her name really quick. So it might have been on True Canadian Crime Cast. But it is so crazy with this what how. Just because of how dark and desolate that highway is between Vanderhoof and Prince, how so many people have went missing. Mainly hmm. indigenous women. And it's I, scary. I haven't driven on that road in 25 years or so. Uh, I drove there 2007 because I took a load up to Medicine Hat. Well, hey, decapitations happen. Could have been anything. Yeah, jeez. Could have been like the omen where there's a vehicle going downhill and and he was in it and went through. A, there was a glass plate that he drove into. You know, stuff happens. Like it is insane that there's a there's signs, big yellow signs that say "Girls don't hitchhike on the highway of tears." Killer yeah. on the loose. That is fucking insane. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they got. One of them, like Cody Labotkov, Cody Labotkov, or Labotkov. Oh yeah, a uh, Canadian crime podcast had yeah, gone. Yeah, they on had him on there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's our Facebook watcher. It's Penny. I should have known Penny, that. Penny. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, Cody Labotkov. Yep. Yeah, and he was a convicted of murdering three different women and a teenage girl, so four women. Jesus. Yeah, one of Canadian Canada's youngest seller, serial killers. Her, it, yeah, well, of course, and it is a creepy highway. Well, you think about fucking. I mean, Highway ninety seven is a little better because there's, I mean, like there's Bear Lake and McLeod Lake, but it's pretty fucking desolate and dead. You know, yeah. you don't think about it. You know, we never thought about it when we were driving as kids. When you think about it now, like fuck yeah, like you know. Yeah, I just read that too, Penny, that they still don't know. Like, they still, they are grasping at straws. They have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. But that happens with pretty much anything, solved or unsolved. People will grasp at straws and they'll they'll turn 
mole hills into mountains. Yeah, and it's just uh, yeah, it's a, it's a damn shame. Jesus, I remember that actually, and that actually put a big thing forward for proper like radios and vehicles for people. I remember when that happened. Yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> I do remember when that happened. And yet cell phone reception in various parts of that highway still aren't great or non-existent. Uh, it's actually um, between McKenzie and Prince. It's pretty solid now. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it has. Yep. The Pine Pass. Oh, you just said it, Ryan. I just brought it up. <laughs> as at a lake oh it's so pretty fuck they somebody well has the news ended tonight uh somebody had taken a picture on top of one of the mountains right outside of uh, on banff like looking down on banff okay and I, I just said to kim i'm like we live in a beautiful country mm-hmm. and now i'm looking at like after uh as a lake it's like this is fucking awesome and bijou falls <laughs> hey i've climbed up there <laughs> yeah Hey, Chad, did you have to have your beatus checked or what? Yeah. An appointment with Puddin. <laughs> so, yeah, awesome. Fucking awesome. Well, I'm glad you're here, Chad. Yeah. Because oh. we need to make fun of you for, you know, material and content. For purposes. Yeah. Because our audience expects nothing less of us. Awesomeness. Here we go. Fred and Rosemary West, an absolutely lovely couple from the UK. They killed everyone in their past. So you should look, actually, I was listening to the Jack the Ripper one by this true crime cast, Ooh. and there's only one picture of a victim, and her name was Mary Jane Kelly. Go look at those fucking pictures. Like, it is unreal what he did to that woman. You get like, and they have a, they have a picture of her. And then they have like the odd, talk, like not the odd, but the from the de- the scene where she was killed. It's unfucking real. Yeah, disembowelment all the way. They carved her face up. It was unreal. Can't have it. Yeah, Heather said that the first time she was here. I remember that. At least you're you're leaning into that now, Chad. The pudding. Yeah. Now we have to come up with something else to trigger you. Fred West. What the no no no. Oh, so they were killing people, but well, the West has committed their murders both for practical reasons and for sexual gratification. Okay, holy fuck! Their crime span from sixty-seven to eighty-seven. Jeez, that's a career. They killed kill twelve to thirteen people. That's it. Lazy asses. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I've never even heard of them. Wow. Oh, excuse me. So when Heather is talking about less snobbery in in England as opposed to Scotland, I wonder if she's talking about people like them. Because come on, man, 20 years, 12 to 13 people, get it together. You can do more than that. Hell, H.H. H. Holmes did better than that. Actually, I just... Yeah, okay, so there was that the one they just talked about? Like, did that was that one, one with the death castle? It was a hotel. It was that he didn't. It's all fucking fabricated. Really? I just listened to a pod. The pod true crime talked about it. It's not true. There was no Shit. hotel. Yeah. The story they told, like, because they told, of course, the story of the rumors. I'm like, this is like something out of Saw. It didn't happen. Mm. It didn't happen. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a good story. It was an awesome story. Like, I was like, man, is this where they got the idea for Saw? Hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, the Black Dahlia. I remember seeing a movie with Josh Hartnett from, I think, 2006 that was about the Black Dahlia. Yeah, that was some extreme crime shit, too. Like yep. American Jack the Ripper stuff. Yep, and they never figured it out, right? Mm-hmm. Mary Jane Kelly. Good Bull Beats song. Chadney's right. Oh, not Puddin' Specialist? No. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't like. Yeah, he was an unidentified. No one. He killed at least five women. Yeah, at least five. 
Mm. Scary times, man. Scary times. Back then, yeah. See, this is one of the positives of this surveillance state. And I hate to turn everyone against me for saying that, but it's much harder to get away with that kind of crime in this day and age because of cameras and GPS and and DNA blood spatter specialists and things like that. Yeah. Well, an interesting thought about how, you know, why they're having, you know, we're not hearing about serial killers the way they used to be <clears throat> because like, because of that, that's why we're getting more of the spree killings now hmm. because there you, you can't really hide anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's just, yeah, it, it, there's the spree killings now. You know, like the mass shootings and whatnot. Heather, would you say your accent is similar to Karen Gillan? Because um, Karen has a, she has a lovely Scottish accent, but um, I think her accent kind of is in the middle in terms of uh, Scottish, you know, how some Scottish people, when they speak, there's a lot of tongue curling, so it becomes very difficult to understand what some of them say. Or And there are others who maybe they've been around and their accent is either lessened due to being around or it's, it's a choice on their part where they lessen it just a bit. I, I just want to know where you fall on that scale. Yes, who made him? Yes, exactly. Yeah, fucking idiot. Who was the other one? There was the BTK and there was, um, oh, Jesus, there was that David Fincher movie from 2007 with, I think it was Jake Gyllenhaal and Robert Downey Jr. Um, Ghostbusters? <laughs> yes, David Fincher directed Ghostbusters. We are in that alternate universe and it was wonderful. All right, yeah. calm your tits. It's considered trashy. Well, you're my kind of woman. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how, how that sounds, but sure. <laughs> oh, Cockney. Ooh, that's a that's got a kind of swingy accent to it. Mix that with Scotland. Ooh. <gasps> I'm surprised you speak English words. Me speak English? That's impossible. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Jack it, the Ripper. God, that's it's so probably considered trashy in England, like Yorkshire area, but where you are, it's probably more accepted. Then again, I'm talking from absolute ignorance because I've never been there. Ooh, yeah. Those two have been in at least two movies together. I don't know. I like, I like, uh, I like Irish accents. I really do. <laughs> Really like Irish accents. Hey, Ryan nailed it. Okay, so then I have to find uh, two sentences that Sir Sean Connery and Sir Michael Caine have both said, like in the, in the exact same cadence, and then mix it together and see how that sounds. Good luck on that. Yeah, I was going to say, let me know how that works out for you. Yeah, I'll see you in 20 years. Yeah, let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, that's an interesting accent. Yep. What? I'm just scanning through Facebook right now. See if there's anything interesting. <laughs> I used to do that, but it got to the point where I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So I simply stopped. I'll show up on Facebook randomly mm -hmm. for a minute. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, yeah. It's not that I can't be bothered. It's that I, I can't stay there. Yeah, and, oh, I get it. That's going to sound completely snobbish to all my Facebook friends, but I, it's not nothing against them. Oh, no, not at all. Like, I agree. I, you know, I can't go the extreme like Brody, like just to, to leave like he did. I, you know, I do enjoy my social media. And mm -hmm. I like talking shit and sending memes. So it's fun. Yeah, you and Sean kill him. Yeah, Sean's got some good ones too. Yes. I steal some. I like him first before I steal him. How do my toes are told? 
All right. Maybe. I think it's time. Almost. I was going to say, because Gordon's not here right now, I can post this. And it's not to make fun of Gordon if he listens or watches later, but I thought it was a kind of a funny quip just in and of itself. <laughs> I like to I like to say that's wrong, but it's so fucking true. It's so fucking true. Again, it's nothing against Gordon because he's talked about censorship on Facebook in the past, and he does present a, a decent case. But yeah. yeah. So I, I, I wanted to hear our Karen video. You wanted to you, hear it? I can't watch the Karen video. So, Heather, can you take some pictures if you're going to be out in the Highlands and just send them? I just want to know, like, see what it's like. Not, not like, fucking, like, you know, stock pictures. It'd be kind of cool to see, like, someone's actually there. Like, hey, I know this person and these pictures. That would be cool, yeah. I think it'd be fucking really neat electromagnetic frequency blocking hats on out oh fuck ryan you should buy one and wear it on your next live stream <laughs> you haven't done a live stream in a while ryan what's do you have a life or something i mean come on what are you doing hmm. chad needs something to watch while he's gulping down his pudding emf blocking hats on it please uh, somewhere on that page, I think it's probably halfway down. The people who bought that product also bought this, and you'll just go down the rabbit hole, I think, on that one. Cool. That'd be awesome. I'm always curious, like, and, and don't don't dox yourself, Heather, but like, not in your neighborhood. Like, I've asked my Irish friend to do, it, but he won. I'm always curious, like, what around their place looks like, because ours. Or so, it's just so generic, right? Like, well, for us, it is Canada. Like, in, in like Vancouver's a city. I live in flat ass Alberta. So I'm always curious how they're called. Like, I love seeing pictures of like little villages in like Norway and stuff like that because it's just such a different, different life, different you looking ever, life. You ever gone on Google Street View to different countries? Uh huh. Yeah, I, I did that with a small town in Denmark. Yeah, didn't look too much different. Some of them are though, so yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. yeah, of course the the train spotting question comes up because it's Scotland. Do you ever see train spotting too? No. Hmm. Do I need to? I've heard different reviews. That's why I didn't watch it. Eh, it's because all right. I'll, I'll be honest. I did not like Super Troopers too. I couldn't get through it. So. I haven't seen that. I couldn't even get. I could not get through it. So. Hmm. First one was a classic. Yep. So yeah, that's one of those things like fucking stop. You know, like like ah, oh, it was good. Why just leave it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. No need for a sequel. You know, it's like I'm actually shocked. Thank God they haven't done it yet. But a Jaws, I still love Jaws to this day. And I say, like, please nobody fuck up Jaws, like because I can still watch it and enjoy it. Please don't fuck up Jaws. You're talking about don't do a remake. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because it's got three sequels and they just get progressively more and more terrible. Terrible, yeah. Yeah, speaking of Sir Michael Caine, he was in the fourth one. Yes, it was horrible, so. <laughs> Did you get high on eating lots of pudding before you watched Super Troopers 2, Chad? And we may. <laughs> yeah, that baby part was disturbing. And yeah, and, and and remember what her line of work was, and that, and she said that was disturbing. Yeah. Okay. All right, Karen, me up, and then it's almost time to wrap this motherfucker up. That Karen video, that was the one. Oh, was that the one? Oh, okay, I thought you, I thought you had a different Karen video. No, nope, oh, my that bad. Was the one. Now I'm I got to go back to the old grind and find funny Karen videos. I'm, I'm more and more intrigued by what people consider entertainment in this day and age you know back in the roman times it would be gladiators fighting to the death and people would see that as entertainment nowadays it's people watching 
well, people like myself watching extreme horror movies and considering that entertainment. Other people, yourself perhaps, consider freak out videos and Karen videos as entertainment. Only when I'm here. That's only when I watch them is with you guys. Ah. I, I don't go out of my way. I like watching like some prank videos are pretty fun. Like I like, again, you don't know. Some of them look real fake, but there are some, it looks like they really fuck with each other. Like it's fun. Like I get a kick out of them. Um, just one, uh, like there was that video going around. I don't know if you saw it, but it's like a husband scares his wife for like six years and he records it every time. Yeah. And like, he doesn't really do anything. Like it is isn't totally like, random right it doesn't look set up so i used to watch a lot of fail videos as well that just got old for me at some point mm -hmm. me too yeah it gets to the point where it's like all right like yeah it just gets old i uh i like watching live music videos i like seeing how bands do live stuff and how it sounds uh lincoln park actually has a really good version greater version of uh rolling in the deep Really? Yeah, Mike's playing piano and Chester singing it. I thought it was pretty fucking cool. Nice. You know, and like, um, just because there's cool videos when you wish, like, man, I would love to have been at that moment. Like, when after Chester passed away, Jay Z was performing, I think, in Madison Square Garden, and he did Encore Numb, like, because they did it in a mic, a, a, a mic, like a mashup. Mm -hmm. When Lincoln Park and Jay Z did their mashup uh, CD, and he did it was just cool i just i would have loved to have been in the crowd because everybody was singing chester's part and this was a predominant african-american concert because it's jay-z right yeah. and they were still singing it which was fucking awesome yeah you know yeah when it's cross culture like that because i don't really see uh jay-z and lincoln park being a big crossover but it's mm -hmm. cool when bands like that do. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's neat when it comes together like that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's awesome. I wonder, yeah, if that was his big last joke. <laughs> that would be, that'd be something Gilbert Godfrey would do, though, right? So. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand the people who have to get decked out coffins and line them with, I don't know, a, a stereo system and yeah. have to be buried with liquor and, and back in our day, like a discman or something. No, yeah. Nope. Shit. Burn me up and, and put the ashes in a jar and that's it. Yeah. I don't need to be one of those zombies that come back to life. No, me neither. Over, over 5,000. Good Lord. Ugh. That Good used to be Lord. a down payment for a car. No shit. Now that's your payment for a fucking box. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, just like weddings, funerals are expensive. When you're doing your last will and testament, you got to set aside funds for that. Yeah, and that's really, really sad. I think really I can is. answer this one. Guido is Ukrainian for grandpa. Yeah, Guido, silver. So Once Ryan's finished chugging his tea, he'll type out his answer. Yeah. Because he can't drink, so he has, to, he has to trade one vice for another. Ukrainian for grandpa. Bob yeah. Grandpa. Yep. Yeah. So I think we kind of, we've hit a wall now. Yeah. I don't mind the shorter shows every once in a while. I'm sure we'll make up for it. On the 5th, I'm sure. Not next Thursday, but next Saturday, the 7th. Mm -hmm. And we've mentioned this on the past two shows as well, because Nick has family and I don't, therefore he's not available. So I'm not going to do a show by myself on the 5th because we all know how that goes. I get flagged for it. Why? Because I'm an idiot. Which is awesome. The foul mouth fat asshole's not around and you get flagged. That's great. Yes. Yep. 
Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that is a testament to how screwed up our world is, I say. Yep. And I agree with you. So we will be back next Saturday, not next Thursday the 5th, next Saturday, May 7th, 6 p.m. My time, 7 p.m. Berta time. Berta, baby. Yeah. We didn't have a whole lot of people here, but the people we did, Reverend Ryan, of course, Heather, Chad, Penny, and I think that was about it. That was it today. It was a quiet night tonight. So It was, but uh, Frank is doing his NFL first round draft picks and I Casey's probably watching along with him. Now where everyone else is, I have no idea. Sarah's working. Ah. I know that. So, so yeah. But, yeah, and okay. Frank's still going, so yeah, of course. He's American and it's football. So the, they could go on for hours and hours. And I think he's with J Man. Yeah, J Man's with him. Yeah. Nice. So, so, all right. Okay, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. We will be back next Saturday, the 7th. I have to say it three times because Chad's going to go next Thursday. You guys weren't here and I ate all that pudding for nothing. Huh? Huh? And my, my busty see. nurse had to revive me with with a, the electroshock. <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> we ought to bring that back. And stuff. No, that's dead. Yes, it does. It's not coming back. And one more for the road. Ta-ta. Canuckle. Nice. Ta-ta. I like it. So if we see y'all next Saturday, great. If we don't, then like Gordon Campbell, fuck you.